Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today is March 11th, 2015, and we have more Dragons of Tarkir spoilers. We actually have 14 new cards to look at today. That's quite a few. Just as a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, good time to do so. We're going to continue to do these spoiler videos every day that spoilers come out. And in addition to that, once the full set is spoiled, which will be pretty soon now, we'll go ahead and start our set review videos as well. So having said that, we got a lot of cards. Let's jump in and start looking at them. First one is Sion of Ugin, and it's six mana for a colorless 4-4 flyer. It is a dragon spirit, so a lot of Dragon Matters cards out there, which makes it better than your typical six for a 4-4 flyer. This card is a fine man and limited. There's going to be times where you're going to need an extra creature and you're going to play a card like this. Or in limited, you may have a very strong Dragon's Matters deck and you're going to want this to just be an extra creature in it. So definitely some good limited implications. Uh, probably not a card you're going to see in Constructed. However, what's interesting about this card is it is colorless. And we know this fall, Battle of Zendikar is coming. Eldrazi are coming. You know there's going to be a lot of synergies with, with colorless cards. So what's going to happen to some of these colorless dragons is going to be interesting because there's dragons matters that's going to exist as well as colorless matters potentially in the next block so some of these cards that kind of seem okay or mediocre could really become big cards later on so we'll have to keep our eye on them Next card is Orator of Ajute, and this one was spoiled from a foreign language card. It's one white, one colorless for a flying defender. It's a bird monk, and as an additional cost, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand. If you did, or you had a dragon card in play when he comes, when you cast him, draw a card. So he's basically a flying wall of omens. Wall of omens is a good card, so he's even better. I, I like this card a lot. It's easily going to see some lim limited play. You can gum up the ground and the air with it and you get to kind of trip off it for two that's pretty good and as a matter of fact it's good enough to see some play maybe in some control decks in standard so very nice card our next one is duress and duress is a very familiar staple it's been reprinted many times one black sorcery target opponent reveals his or her hand you choose a non-creature down that card from it that player discards that card in most standards where duress was legal, duress has made its way into there in some way, shape, or form. It makes its way occasionally into modern, especially sideboards. In limited, it's not as powerful because limited just seems to be so creature-centric. However, it's a fantastic sideboard card in limited. If you're playing against maybe a Jeskai deck where you know there's going to be some non-creature spells coming your way, you may want to board in the duress. So fine, very fine card. It's going to continue to be strong and expect the type of things you've seen from it in the past. Next card is Herd Chaser Dragon. One green, five colorless, flying trample, three, three. It has a megamorph for two green and five. And when it is turned face up, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other dragon creature you control. So this is the green version of this quasi dragon lord that flips and gives counters to other dragons. It's just so, it's just like the others, and we said this about the others, it's just so high priced. I mean, six for a 3-3 three, three flyer with an extra ability is fine and limited, and that's where he's going to see play. But even the, the Megamorph ability just becomes very costly. And when you're looking at seven to flip him and then three to cast him, it starts to feel a little ugly. Obviously, if you get him early game, you're going to go ahead and just morph him. And, and morph is always a nice thing to be able to do early game. But if you get him late game, are you really going to want to pay the 10 mana to do this combat trick, basically? Maybe it depends on the board state, but you know, for the most part, I think he's going to be seen more as just a six three three flyer, which is just fine and limited, but nothing that's going to blow the roof off. Next card is Serac, the Hunt Caller. Two green, two colorless. He's a legendary human warrior, and he's a house. He's five four, and he is formidable. If at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control creatures with power eight or greater, then target creature you control gains haste to end a turn. So if you have a bunch of creatures in play, not only is he a 5-4 four for 4, but then he basically gives a creature haste every turn. So whatever creature you cast will be able to attack that turn. He's just an aggressive house. He's a limited bomb. This is a fantastic card. And he's good enough to see some constructive play definitely in standard just because if there's an aggressive deck out there that's using green or a ramp strategy he's going to be awesome 
Next card is Rending Volley, and this was also spoiled from a foreign language card from French, and it costs one red. It's an instant, and it can't be countered by spells or abilities. It will deal four damage to target white or blue creatures. So this is the last one of those color hosing cards that we have seen spoiled. And when I first looked at these cards, I might have underestimated them a little bit because they are super aggressively costed. One one red for an instant that's going to do four damage. Now, granted, it can only be a white or blue creature. is pretty awesome, and it can't be countered. So they're really kind of piling on the power level of these things. Now, of course, obvious drawback is they can only be used on the enemy colors. But you do have to think for a moment we are in cons of Tarkir world where there's a lot of multicolor creatures so these creatures and spells are going to be affected by multiple copies of these or else you know just an obzon deck for example there's so many out there in the field and standard that if you're playing a hose card against any of those three colors you probably almost are safe enough to main deck it if you really want to be aggressive that might be a little too much but but you know you're going to run into certain things so these cards are just so aggressive that i do like them the more i look at them the more i really start to like them don't lose sight of these things i mean they may be a sideboard card but these will probably be a sideboard staple and not just in limited and standard but potentially modern as well these are these are fine cards Arkans triumph one red two colorless it's an instant search your library for a dragon creature card reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your library so you get a dragon tutor and it only costs three and it's an instant and it's uncommon this is pretty good i uh, you're going to have so many dragon cards and so many dragon matters cards that this is awesome end step you can go ahead and play this surprise your opponent pull a dragon out of your library cast it on your turn this is a fine card this is a fine limited card this is a fine card that if there is the right deck in standard or even if it's just one dragon that really uh, comes into its own in standard that this might be a way to go retrieve that dragon that's awesome and you know i look at this card and there may be ways you know i haven't really thought much about it but honestly there might be some potential to brew something with this in modern or even in one of the other eternal formats this is tutors are powerful and if you have the right target out there and you know i'm sure we can think of a lot of good dragon targets you never know where this card could go keep an eye on this one Next one is Custodian of the Trove, 3 mana for a 2-5 defender. It comes into play tap. Uh, nothing huge here. It gums up the ground, especially if you're playing a Saltai strategy. That's kind of nice. Uh, but again, watch these color lists and these artifact cards for when Zendikar comes, because they might become a lot better than they are now. Now, this is very aggressively costed at 3. It's a fine guy for limited. Might not always make your cut, but if you want to gum up the, the battlefield, he's there for you. Tapestry of the Ages, four for this artifact, costs two to, to tap to draw a card, but activate this ability only when you've cast a non-creature spell this turn. So if you're playing a Jeskai build, this might be an okay limited card. You do have to take into account, cost four, it's not going to feel good when you if you draw this in the first probably six to eight turns of the game when you're trying to do other things and develop your board late game this is great this is an awesome card late game to be able to just mana sink and just draw an extra card every turn that you have a non-creature spell which if you have enough of those in your deck you know maybe is a third of your turns you know it just nudges you ahead of card advantage so this isn't going to be for every limited deck but there are going to be some limited decks so we use this and use this well uh we probably won't make the crossover into constructed and finally, our last spoilers today are actually a cycle of cards, and it's Ajute Monument, Salmagar Monument, Kulagan Monument, Atarka Monument, and Jermoka Monument. These are interesting cards. You pay three for them, and you can tap them for the allied colors, and then you can pay the allied colors plus four to turn it into a 4-4 four, four flying dragon that's those colors until end of turn at first i looked at these and i was kind of like eh, i didn't really use the banners that much i mean i occasionally use banners in sealed if i really needed the color fixing and i had no other option once in a while they would they would make my pool but most of the time i was just throwing in extra lands if i felt like i needed more mana as opposed to running the banners but one thing i'll say about these cards 
in a Dragon's Matters deck that kind of makes them better than banners because there are things that are going to be checking for dragons that are going to work off the fact that you have X amount of dragons. They're going to give these things maybe counters or what have you. So you look at these, and these are probably better than banners, especially late game. They're a nice mana sink. It's an extra creature, and it's a good creature, 4-4 four, four flyer, even though it is pricey to turn it. But, you know, this is not going to fit into every limited deck. There's going to be limited decks. I think the first thing you're going to ask yourself is, do I need color fixing? Yes. Then the second question is, can I wait to turn three to get my color fixing, or am I more concerned about early game color fixing where a land might do me better? If the answer is I can wait to turn three or later, then why not throw this in? Because it's color fixing, and then late game is going to help you with it as a mana sink. So I think these things will see more play than banners. They might not see tons and tons of play, but they'll definitely see more play in banners. And there may be even some decks that just have so much dragon synergy, they just want a, one or two of these in their deck too. So it won't make the the call for constructed, but you can see these played in limited. Again, I said this about the other colorless cards. Zendikar's coming, so who knows what that will mean for all colorless cards. I think their power value may change dramatically. So having said that, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and as always, have a great day.